that song because it talks honestly about the different seasons we have in life and when we're blessed and when we're feeling full sometimes God's love and goodness does not overflow or sometimes when we find ourselves in desert or dark places we forget what God says about us that you that I am a child of God chosen and dearly loved and in both times we tend to give in to sin and pride and fear and so God invites us as we start our time of worship today to confess those times of thought word and deed when we have not behaved as who we are God's chosen and beloved people so let's start with a private moment with God and speak and sing our confession to him. As we'll hear in our key reading today, we have not only been chosen by God the Father, cleansed by God the Son, and now called to a new life through His Holy Spirit. And as God's beloved people, we are forgiven all our sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for choosing us and calling us to be your children. Gracious Jesus, we thank you for cleansing us in your blood shed from the cross. Loving, moving Holy Spirit, you've called us to a new life and purpose. Help us each day to live as your children. And all God's people said, Amen. Please be seated and remain seated as we hear our first reading for today.
The Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left, and every, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We speak together our shared faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we will be singing Who You Say I Am. And just listen to these words as we uh, go into Pastor's sermon today uh, as it focuses on uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and uh, talking how we are chosen. Who am I that the highest king would well? But he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me.
Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. And all God's people said, I had never felt more alone and lost and a stranger than I did in 2005 in Hanoi, Vietnam. We were there with Lutheran World Relief for a couple of weeks to help bring medical care. And on that morning, I stood at a major intersection with Motorcycles left, right, up, and down, and they didn't speak a word of English, and I didn't speak a word of Vietnamese. And I realized if I got lost, I would be out of luck. I felt so much a stranger in a foreign land. And maybe there have been days you have, too. Thankfully, we had a guide in country. He was a Lutheran, Vietnamese, not many of those, Dr. Tunu, who actually led us all throughout. And even uh, when I get interviewed by the Vietnamese Secret Service. But that's another story. Thankfully, Peter was a guide to God's people too, as they more and more began to feel like strangers, even in their own hometown. And maybe you're feeling a little bit like that. You grew up maybe in a nation where you felt very comfortable and very much familiar, and now (laughs) we're looking around and more and more our country doesn't look like it used to. And we begin to feel like strangers, even in our own state, even in our own community, even on our own street. And if you're feeling a little strange, a little out of place, then this is God's blessing for you. A small book written by Peter. It's near the back of your Bibles. And Peter encourages us throughout all of it that we can, in the midst of these strange times, be rock solid and stand firm through it all. In fact, today we're going to start at the very beginning and in these next 11 weeks walk through this great short book, word by word and verse by verse. And you'll get the most out of today's message if you open your Bibles and keep bringing your Bibles with us these 11 weeks. In fact, crease open this uh, key letter of the Bible. It's near the back. 1 Peter, the first of two letters that he wrote to God's people. And Peter says, from the very beginning, we're chosen to be different. And if you want to unpack that, please open your Bible with us. I'm actually encouraging you throughout this series to get out your phones, too. Noah's got his. There's a Bible app called the YouVersion Bible app. You can install it on your phone. It's free please feel free to do so because at the bottom right-hand corner, there's a tab called More, and you can find something called Events. And special churches can put key content for today's message on this free Bible app. So feel free to check it out. There's extra content, even Bible reading plans, media, and other stuff all on this free Bible app. Feel free to interact with today's message. The more you do, either on your phone or with your Bible, the more it will get out and God's Word will speak to you today. Now, our key reading you didn't hear uh, from our reader today, I'm going to share it with you right now, and then we're going to unpack it as we go. And you're going to hear some strange words. That's okay. We'll explain it along the way. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, no, that's not Cappuccino, Uh, Cappadocia, 
Asia, and Bithynia. We'll unpack all of that. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. There's a lot there. Last few verses. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Well, there's deep, there's a lot there. The letter gets a little easier to understand as we go along. In fact, I'm going to invite you this week to just read it. 130 verses, you can do it in about 30 minutes. As we get started in this great letter, here's just a few things I'd like to unpack for you as we get going. Who, what, where, when, and why. And if you have your study Bible with you, can, you can write these in the corner. Feel free to check it out. First of all, who? It is written by, you guessed it, Peter. His given name was Simon. And you heard in our gospel reading today how he met Jesus in a powerful way. Later on, Jesus gave him a nickname, Rocky, or Peter. He didn't always live up to it. In fact, there was a time when he denied knowing Jesus. But after Jesus' resurrection and restoration, he never denied Jesus again. His faith was rock solid. That's Peter. Now, what is this that we're looking at? It's a tiny little letter in the back of your Bible. That's what the word epistle means. It means letter. And it's called a general epistle, meaning it's to anybody, uh, not to one church or one person. That's what this is. Now, where was this letter written to? And uh, no, it wasn't to a place called Cappuccino. It was a, a, an area of Cappadocia, Galatia, Bithynia, Pontus, Asia, modern-day Turkey. So that's where he's writing. A lot of Christians lived in that area about 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. If you're following local news, this is just south of Ukraine. All right, just north across the Black Sea is the Ukraine, where a lot is happening. So that's the area where he is writing, and it's still an area filled with conflict today. So that's the where. Then when is he writing? Well, this is key, too. Peter is writing, we think, about 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, 64 A.D. Now, this is a time when there is a crazy emperor on the throne of Rome. An evil, wicked man named Nero, we think in 64, he actually burned down Rome. But he blamed Christians for it. This new group of people, everybody thought they were a little strange and weird, had these strange customs. So Nero began blaming Christians. They actually began to be hunted and actually imprisoned, even thrown to the lions. Peter can see all of this starting to happen, and so he wants to warn Christians that challenging times are coming. You see why this letter might be relevant for us today, living in challenging times. That's why he wrote it. Chapter 1, verse 6 talks about fiery trials they're going through, and so he writes them to encourage them. There's some hard words, but most of this letter is filled with encouraging words, including these first five verses. Now, if you have your Bibles, feel free to underline these key words as we go. Yes, it's okay to underline in your Bibles. You'll appreciate it a couple of years from now as you go back and review. So 
please feel free to do that and bring your personal Bibles the next 10 weeks on Sundays. All right, Peter starts with the name of the person who's writing. That's a smart way to write a letter. Our English letters today, you have to drop to the very end to see who's writing it to you. Letters in those days started right at the beginning with the author. Peter, Rocky, an apostle, that word means someone who is sent, and finally, of Jesus Christ. It's not about Peter, it's not about his own glory, it's all about Jesus. Now here are some strange words. Elect, exiles of the dispersion. Those are some strange words Next slide, I'll sort of break it down for you. It's real simple. Elect means you are known. Even before your parents knew you were coming, God knew you were coming. Even before you knew Jesus, God knew you'd be a follower of Jesus. The Father knew. So you are known. The Bible says before a word is on our tongue, God knows it completely. God knows you better than your closest friend or dearest partner. God knows you and loves you. Next, that word exiles. That means that you're sort of not feeling at home anymore. Back then they were being persecuted, so Christians were going every which way. Even us now sometimes feel like strangers in our own hometown. And maybe this letter is useful for us. In our workplace, there are less Christians, especially in high school. Even on our street, there are less people who follow Jesus. And we could feel like strangers right where we're at. And finally, that word dispersion. The people who received this letter would have known that this referred to all those believers who, around 700 years before Jesus, were captured by foreign armies and carted away to foreign lands for about 200 years, 700 to 500 A.D., they were scattered into the wind and were longing to come back home. So, verse 1, he's writing to them. And if you ever felt like that, that's who he is saying that maybe you are. And this letter's for you. Verse 2, he says, It's according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, the Spirit, and Jesus Christ, sprinkling with his blood. You see this? This is the Trinity. Three persons, one God. Three persons, one God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And especially when we talk about Jesus being covered with his blood, that sounds a little gross, right? This only happened one time in their history. Exodus chapter 24 describes right after they got the Ten Commandments, Moses sacrificed animals and then sprinkled all Israel with the blood of the sacrifice. Super gross, reminding them of the cost of sin and a sign that God was doing something new. So let's summarize this. We see real quickly, we are chosen by God the Father. You are not an accident. You are not an incident. You are not unwanted. You are chosen. Even when it seems like no one else wants you, God wants you. Even when you are the last person picked on the team or for the job at work, you are chosen first by God, and that's a good feeling. And you are called by God the Holy Spirit. We don't come to God by ourselves, but through the reading of the Word and through His gifts, the Holy Spirit calls us into a walk with Jesus Christ. It's not something we do. And we are cleansed by Jesus. His blood covers our sin. Because our sins are washed away, for us as followers of Jesus, there is no more guilt, no more shame, no more fear. Throughout the week, you don't have to live embarrassed or guilty or fearful that God doesn't want you or will hold your sin against you. From the moment you were baptized, the sacrifice of Jesus was applied to you and his blood covered 
your sin. No guilt in life. No fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. That's a wonderful gift, how we are cleansed by God the Son. Now the Bible says we are given a few things right now. Peter starts with a blessing. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He describes how we are born again. Say that with me. Born again. Next slide, please. We have an inheritance. Say that with me. An inheritance. And finally, we are being guarded. Say that. Being guarded. Those are all things that God is doing for you right now. And let me tell you, Peter knew something about being guarded by angels. The Bible says after the Christian church began to be persecuted and even killed, Peter was locked up. Herod was going to make an example of him and kill him the very next day. But that night, God sent an angel to open the doors of the prison, take off Peter's bonds, and set him free. Peter walked outside the prison, didn't even understand what was going on, and only realized later an angel of God was guarding him. The Bible says every child of God has an angel watching over them as well. And seeing how some of you drive, I know that to be true. Amen? <clears throat> Leadfoot. That's right. <laughs> we are guarded by angels of God. And when we walk in fearful places, we are not alone. Some of you have been in situations or have been in fires. And God has safeguarded your life and watched over you. We praise God for his guarding and watching over us. You can read more about that in the Acts, book of Acts, chapter 12. So these are some things we have right now. Next slide, please. We are born again in holy baptism. We have a new birth, a new life, a new family. We are gifted a lasting inheritance. Now, is an inheritance something you earn? No. It's given upon the death of someone else. It's not something you earn or deserve. It is a gift. And sometimes it's a surprise. You are gifted a lasting inheritance. A family, a future, a new home, a new destiny that no one can take away. And, praise God, along the way, you are guarded by angels as well. So does it seem like something's different in your life? That's not an accident or a mistake. Next slide, please. In fact, have you ever felt like this? Some of you say, amen, that's me right now. A square peg's trying to fit into a round hole. Some of you have the luxury of feeling like you fit in, and maybe you're in a place where you feel welcome all the time and safe and happy all the time. More often than not, right now, though, we're feeling more and more uncomfortable. Maybe that's not necessarily a bad thing. We're feeling more uncomfortable, maybe, in our world, in our culture, in our life, at work or at school, and we're feeling like this. But that doesn't mean something's wrong. That may mean something's right. These are nine things God gives to you and does for you that he doesn't do for those who don't know Jesus Christ or have a walk with him. We talked about these nine things uh, in our identity because of who God has called us to be, we are known. We are, yes, sometimes strangers in our own hometown. And the people in Peter's day, when they came to Christ, their whole values were changed. They were different. They had different values, different things that were important to them. When you become a follower of Jesus Christ, you become different. 
and can even feel like a stranger. And they were scattered. There were less and less of them in certain places, and it felt like they were just in all different corners of the world, but that's exactly God's design. Like dandelion seeds spread on the wind, so they landed in places that were exactly where God intended them to be. Remember in our Outward series, four weeks, celebrating how God had actually put us in places where we could make the most difference? You're not there by accident. You're scattered there on purpose. God has chosen you for this. This is God's purpose for you right now. He still has a plan and purpose for you today. The Holy Spirit has called us to that, and as Christians living together, working in the Word, walking with each other, we begin to discover what our calling and spiritual gifts are. Along the way, we realize our sin is covered. We don't have to live in guilt or shame anymore because that prevents us from living as God's free people. Instead, we're born in baptism. We're gifted new spiritual gifts. And praise God, along the way, we are guarded by holy angels until that glorious day when God calls us home. There is a reason you feel like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole, and that's by God's design. You are chosen to be different. And so when you become a believer, that means a businessman in the workplace, even though everybody else is cheating and doing everything else to get ahead, will say, no, that's not who I am. A student in school where there's less and less Christians today and people use profanity and share values that are very different than God's design will say, you know, that's not who I am. God has called me to something more meaningful. The husband who is tempted to cheat on his wife either physically or with what he sees on the TV or on his phone says, no. That's not who I am. That's not who God has called me to be. Or even the American turning on the TV set or listening to our leaders talk and feeling more and more strange in our own country, tempted to fit in, tempted to bow the knee, tempted to stay quiet when we should speak, says, no, that's not who I am. I can speak in love. I can gently share God's truth in Jesus Christ. I am called to be different. And that makes all the difference. And all God's people said. We'll continue this series for the next 10 weeks. Feel free to bring your Bibles and use your phones and explore. And if you did... Follow along on your Bible app. You can share some of the things you found meaningful with others. So feel free to use that share tab. Right now, though, we gather our offerings for service in God's kingdom here and around the world. Please put in the offering plate your communication card, at the very least with your name on it, and anything else you'd like to share. And if you would like to give online, including to some of our special funds like the Castillo Fire Relief Fund, you can do so at zionpasadena.com. A lot of things happening this week in God's church. We have our women's group, the Eunice group, meeting this Monday. I think it's at, I think, Laura, you're leading the devotion. They do great work. Check out the Eunice group on Monday. And on Tuesday, if you'd like to help us plan a special event for Independence Day weekend, please plan on joining us on Tuesday. Also, as you heard, uh, the Castillo family lost all their possessions in a fire, but praise God, through uh, His grace and holy angels, their lives were kept safe. And talk to Elva this past week, sounds like God is doing even more surprising and good things through them, even in the midst of their fiery trials. We also 
want to invite you to consider being part of Vacation Bible School. VBS is July 18th through 22nd. We actually have more training for that this coming Tuesday. We're expecting double the amount of students as we had last year. And so there's lots of great ways you can be involved. There's still a few things we need. So if you'd like to check out ways you can help, either in prayer or with your donations, check out the table on the left as you exit. And finally, we're blessed. We're able to get back into the Ronald McDonald House and bring them breakfast once a month. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please see Greg in the back. Greg, please raise your hand. And uh, you can be a part of that important community ministry. Now we'll lift up to God all we, those we named prior to the service today. Please stand for a silent moment of prayer and then we'll speak to the Lord together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for all that you provide for this body and life. Especially today, we thank you for these United States of America, where for generations we've been able to worship you freely and speak boldly our values and faith. Now, even as things are changing and as we feel like strangers in our own land sometimes, you invite us to pray for those in authority over us. And so we pray for our President Joe Biden, our Vice President Kamala Harris, all those leaders at national, state, and local levels, that they might be gifted with wisdom and work to bring peace and harmony for all. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we also thank you for the gift of marriage. How you designed and intended for husband and wife to live in joy and faithfulness to one another. Now our world is giving a different message. And we lovingly care for all those, even those who have different points of view. But we also help, ask that you help us, especially this Pride Month, to lovingly speak when we have the opportunity to your good plans for our sexuality and our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Jesus, <laughs> we thank and praise you that you called Simon to be your follower and even gave him a new name, Rocky, and he began to live up by your grace a foundation of strength for God's people, and a blessed author through the Holy Spirit of our letter we're reading these months. Help us to be encouraged by your word, to take this book of the Bible and explore it together, and be blessed as God's people chosen to be different. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we lift up to you those who need your healing and comforting touch. Vernon and Esma, Richelda, Myrna and Karen, Veda and Alan, Laura and Jenny, Sandra and Kevin's cousin, Joyce and Earl, and Ruth and Sandy. Ed and Ninfa and Lu Juan and Oscar's family. For all those who need your healing and comforting touch, Jesus, lay your hand of grace upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Holy Spirit, you have called us not only by the gospel to grow, but also to live in relationship with others. And so we celebrate with those enjoying birthdays or remembering them this week, like 
Ruth and Susan, Mike and Karen, Brian and Zayden and Killian, and all those we named prior to service today. We also rejoice in the memory of Carl's birthday and with those enjoying anniversaries this week, like Glenn and Blanca, Kevin and Leah, and Casa de Gracia House of Grace Church and their pastor, Miguel Garcia. For all those reasons, we have to give you thanks and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we lift all for whom we pray, along with those we name in our hearts before you now. As we also pray the prayer, Jesus taught all his followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today we heard God's word of encouragement that we are chosen to be different, gifted as his people, and scattered where he sends us. And as we go, we receive his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Holly, what's our final song today? Our final song this morning is Jesus, Mighty God.